Schengen diagram is a space-time diagram, so it's a good idea to know what a space-time diagram is and know how to use it a little bit. Let's take a simple example. Just imagine you are at home and you're having breakfast. So you're here, sitting on your chair, having breakfast. I'm going to draw the space-time diagram of that. So here I have time, and here I have space. Now you're here. Are you moving in space? No. But are you moving in time? Yes. You're going forwards in time. Then you decide that you had enough breakfast and you want to go to school. So your school is here. And you decide to move to school. And that school, you go in the classroom and you sit down to watch a lesson. During your trip, did you move in time? Yes. Did you move in space? Yes. And when you're at school listening to your teacher, well, you're not moving anymore, but you're still moving in time. This is your path in space-time. Now let's consider something else. Let's consider two electrons will repel each other. So you have the two electrons like this, right? And they, they are moving that way, say. And they see each other and they start repelling, they slow down and whoop, they repel. How can we represent this in a space-time diagram? You have your electron moving in time, of course, and in space. And there's another one also doing something similar. This one will spit a photon. It will emit a photon. And therefore, like uh, the bullet coming out of a gun, the gun feels a recoil. So does the electron. I should put two symbols, actually. It emits a photon which hits the other electron. So when you have the bullet hitting something, well, the thing will also move, right? So conservation of momentum imposes that the electron goes the other way. And that was a photon. Well, we just drew the Feynman diagram representing the interaction between two electrons. If we write it linearly, we get electron plus electron gives you electron plus electron. <laughs> That's not very helpful, right? You have no clue what's going on. But when you see the Feynman diagram of the reaction, you see what's going on. You see that it's, it's the exchange of a photon with the law of conservation of momentum that allows the electrons to repel each other. To represent a photon, I represented a little wave like this. So let's have a look at the different symbols. When you have a line with the arrow directed towards the direction of time, this means it's a particle, like an up, a down, an electron, or a neutrino. If you have a line with the arrow going the other direction, it's an antiparticle, like the anti-up, the anti-down, the electron, or the anti-neutrino, or the electron. But make sure that this means that the antiparticle is still going that way. We write the arrow the other way just to remind ourselves that an antiparticle is the time symmetric of a particle. Matter is time symmetric with antimatter. That means that when you represent a particle going in one direction, in time, it's like having an antiparticle going the other direction in time. Or if you prefer, this represents the same behavior that a particle would have if it was going backwards in time. So, to summarize, an antiparticle can be seen like a particle going backwards in time. This has led to some quite interesting and weird theories. I don't believe in them, but uh, I find it quite interesting though. So I'll just show you one of them. The theory of the unique electron. Imagine the beginning of time is here. So basically the beginning of the universe, the Big Bang. And that it doesn't go on for infinity, it goes on for a certain while. So that would be time. If I have an electron which is generated at the Big Bang, it moves through time, and when it arrives here, it bounces back and goes back in time. Right? So basically, the electron would be this, do this, come back, and would be doing some zigzags like this forever. 
So your electron would have some paths in space-time, which would be like this, right? Now, we are somewhere here. We are here. So what do we perceive? Well, we perceive many electrons going forwards in time, and many anti-electrons, positrons, also going forwards in time, but there is actually electrons going backwards, but we perceive them as positrons, because we are moving with time also. And that all the electrons of the universe, and all the positrons of the universe, would just be one electron going back and forth. It's weird. <laughs> it's very weird. Anyway, no, I'm going to move on. Okay, so other symbols. We saw the weak force bosons, are represented by dashed lines. Photons are represented by waves, and the gluons by this kind of uh, wiggly uh, symbol. We have seen earlier that writing down a particle physics reaction linearly allows us to see what we have at the beginning and what is at the end. But we don't know the process that occurs during this reaction. We don't know the steps that occur. These reactions occur in multiple steps. And when you draw the Feynman diagram, you see these steps. Each step corresponds to a vertex. For example, you take an electron that emits a photon and is pushed away. That's a vertex where you have one reactant becoming two products. So that would be electron, gives you electron plus photon. You can also have the other way, where you have two reactants that become a product. Well, we can still use electrons and photons. Imagine you have an electron going that way, and it's hit by a photon that it absorbs, and gives you an electron going that way. You see how you can stick these two vertices together. Let's imagine I take this one and I put it there. This photon would be this photon. I would have my electron here that bangs against a photon and is pushed away. And here we have a representation of the repulsion between two electrons. For that, we stick two vertices together, like Lego bricks. Uh, another example of vertices, a gluon that splits into an up and an anti-up. That would be one reactant, two products. Another example could be, let me think. Yeah, we could have a pion, right? Take a pi plus, which is an up and an anti-down. These two could actually meet and form a W plus. Here we've got two reactants, one product. Vertices like these are steps of particle physics reactions, right? But they are also particle physics reactions, and they need to conserve quantum numbers. So let's consider this one. We have an up plus an anti-down, giving us a W plus. So to check if they conserve quantum numbers, I just list the quantum numbers. B, Q, L, S. B is the baryon number, Q is the charge, L the lepton number, and S the strangeness. Up is a quark, so one third for the baryon number. Anti down is an anti quark, so minus one third for the baryon number. W plus is not a quark, so it's zero for the baryon number. And you see one third minus one third is zero, so before and after you have still the same baryon number, so you can check. Charge. Charge of an up quark is two thirds, that of a down quark is one third, so you get a total of one. And the W plus has got a charge of 1, so charge, check. Lepton number. Well, there's no lepton, so it's 0 everywhere. And there's no strange quark, so it's 0 everywhere. Check, check.